All right, hi everybody. I uh, got to fix a mistake that we made last time. So at the end of the last video, what we did is we locked that ruler into place and we kind of offset it from the follower rod. That way we could uh, we get this ruler to line up left and right with it. Okay, while that's fine and dandy, the problem is the way that I showed you last time causes the ruler to move up and down with the follower rod. And we need the ruler to be stationary so we can measure using a stationary tool. So what we need to do is this. It's actually a pretty simple fix. I'm going to click here, and you'll notice that I have the joints menu expanded. It says it's the planar 5 um, uh, joint that I added. Okay, But I can also come over here, and I can click here, and I can just hit the delete button on my keyboard, and it deletes that constraint. So now this ruler is free to move again, just like it was beforehand. And the way that I actually want to constrain this thing is I'm going to hit J for joint. I'm going to continue. I'm going to move back to that last captured position. I'm going to go grab the bottom of this thing, okay, so like maybe right there, the bottom face. I want to join it to this face here, okay. I'm going to choose that inside circle right there, okay. Right now, it's a planar constraint. That's the kind that I want, but I'm going to use some offsets. The two offsets I'm going to use, I'm going to grab the up and down. I'm going to move this thing down negative 2.5 is the dimension I'm going to type in and the reason I chose that is because I went through and pre-measured before I made this video and find out that's how far it is to the center of the axle and then I'm also going to choose then to move it outward over here so in other words I'm looking at this from the right okay and I think that a decent distance we want it off to the side and about one inch looks like it'd be fine so let's just put one call it good hit enter okay and so now I have a planar joint, but it's between the guide, which doesn't move, and the ruler, which doesn't move, which means, therefore, the ruler will move whenever I want it to. Okay, so now the follower can go up and down, and the ruler does not move with it. It is lined up pretty much in the middle of that thing, so that's pretty nice. And it's off to the side where we can measure and use it without kind of getting in the way right? This is kind of an imaginary ruler, so don't worry about it too much. It's just for the sake of this activity that we use it, okay? So um, we're going to click save and make sure that we have this version saved. And now everything is locked in and ready to go with the exception of the cam. Let's put a cam in. Okay. So I'm going to start with just the hex cam perhaps or the eccentric cam. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Let's use the eccentric cam. Drag and drop that into place. The orientation is all wrong. We need to take this thing and swing it around so we can use it. We can go either way, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just type in a number of 90 for this one here, and that way this thing is locked in the correct orientation. Now my job is to place this so that the hole, the axle goes right through the middle of it, right? So J for joints. I can continue. Let's go back and grab this again. Okay, swing around to the back side. And I'm going to make sure I don't hover on the front of the hole or the center of the hole. I'm going to just do, here we go, the whole cylinder over here click okay and this is a planar constraint right now I don't think that's actually what I want I think I want that to be a rigid constraint and I'll tell you why is because with the rigid constraint number one a couple of things first of all okay notice that it went ahead and it lined up pretty much with this with the follower rod okay now if I want to move it I mean maybe, maybe I'm off by just a tiny little bit but that's pretty darn close okay the other reason is because if it's rigid with the axle here, when I hit enter, watch what it does. When the axle turns, it has to turn with it because it is locked in. It's like being hot glued basically to that axle in the middle. So now when it moves, the eccentric cam turns with it, and that's pretty cool. Okay, so now we're just going to do a couple of more things. Uh, no, you, you know what? In fact, I'm going to, um, I'm going to stop it for here. I think this is a good stopping point for this video. And the next one, I'm going to show you how to make the follower rod not go through the center of the eccentric cam and what we're going to be doing with this um, information as we move forward. So I'm going to save and we're going to quit this video.